We've tried a lot of laptops for photography while traveling, processing your pictures, sharing them and such, and this is my favorite one. It's, it's an iPad, it's not a laptop. This is the, the new 2017 12.9 inch iPad Pro, and it's fantastic. Uh, get rid of your preconceived notions that you might have about working with mobile apps and iPads and stuff, because it's, it's really changed everything about how we travel and it's made it so much better. And if you think an iPad is underpowered, believe it or not, this is way faster than our Windows laptops or even our overclocked desktops. Let's check it out. Okay, first, how do you get the pictures onto the iPad? The way I found is the easiest is just to do it the old fashioned way, which is to use a memory card reader. So I can just pull the SD card out of my camera and pull out this little Thunderbolt SD card reader, drop it in there, and then connect it to the Thunderbolt port here. After I import them, I can go into Lightroom Mobile, which is my favorite app for just organizing files. It's nice because I have a Creative Cloud membership, so all my files get automatically synchronized between my iPad and my computer. So if I import a whole memory card full of pictures here, my iPad, when it's connected to Wi-Fi, will send them up to the Creative Cloud and then my computer, the next time Lightroom's open, it will download them, which means they're automatically in both places, including any edits that I make. Now that I'm into Lightroom Mobile, I can go to Add Photos to import the files from the iPad into Lightroom Mobile, but now I can just real quickly decide which pictures I want to pull in and add them to the Lightroom Mobile catalog here. And here's the amazing thing about Lightroom Mobile. It's, it's actually faster than my big overclocked desktop computer. So I can pull up a picture here and see it in just full resolution and flip through. How is it that the iPad could possibly be faster than my big honking overclocked desktop computer? And it's, it's code. It's just how the developers have written the code. Lightroom for the desktop is this really old code base and it's not optimized for my big old machine. But Lightroom Mobile is a fresh code base that is perfectly optimized for these mobile devices. So th I think that's pretty much it. But the end result is it might not make sense. This iPad is not faster overall, but the way Lightroom works is much, much faster. And these portraits are kind of a good example because some of these, I drag the shutter a little and it, they were a little slow. So I can quickly zoom in and see that, you know, this picture's not quite sharp and you they have gestures that work really well that allow you to really quickly cull your pictures and determine which ones are just the absolute best and then when you're ready to actually do the editing on those photos most of the lightroom controls that you're used to are still there so so by swiping at the bottom here i can quickly crop the picture rotate it really easily go in and edit just about any type of raw file, adjusting the tint just as easily as just dragging up and down. Quickly adjust the exposure, and, and because it works with the same raw files that regular Lightroom does, I can actually recover those highlights that would otherwise be lost without any clipping, as well as recovering the shadows. So you're getting that full Lightroom quality all at, at your fingertips. And as you can see, it just it's so nice that it happens just seamlessly and instantly responsive. Look, I, I'll touch with three pictures to kind of check the before and after. Lightroom Mobile even has selective adjustments. So for example, I could pull in here and brighten up the eye a little bit. You can just drag it to make it a little bit larger and then maybe just brighten up the eye. So it doesn't have all the Lightroom functionality. You can't stitch together panoramas. Uh, you can't obviously open it as layers in Photoshop, but for the most part, the stuff that I want to do on the road, the culling, the quick editing, the exporting, the sharing, that's all there. But not only that, you don't have to stick with the conventional form factor. I don't have to use a keyboard at all. I can do it all sitting in my lap like this. Now there's not a full version of Photoshop here, but there are a couple of Photoshop tools that are really useful. In fact, you can do morphing and such. So I can click this icon up here and then select edit in, maximum available to do the full sized image. And then I can do healing or liquefy in the Photoshop fix tool. So I could open it up to just remove a couple of blemishes. Not that this model Ariana has anything that needs to be done, but if I felt like it, I could come in here and just quickly remove things. 
So you have most of what you need for a full editing workflow. And as you can see, I can just touch this to head back into Adobe Lightroom. And those changes are immediately brought over and in fact, actually synced back to my computer through the Creative Cloud. It's pretty amazing. Let's pull up one of these pictures here and open it in another editing app. Let's find a nice one. See how fast that is? Let's touch that and then open in maximum available. And it's going to give me a list of other apps that I can use, including non Adobe apps. So let's do affinity pro and something that's really awesome is the pencil. I know the Apple pencil with this tool. I can really quickly do things like create a new layer here, say for makeup, open up a brush, choose a color with just a little more excitement to it to make it real gradual, adjust the brush size, and then just paint it in real delicately here. And I'm not going to say that Affinity Pro is everything that the full version of Photoshop is, but it's almost everything that I need. And what I don't have in it, I can fill in with other apps on iOS because you can throw these images into hundreds of other iOS apps that do specialized things like uh, retouching the faces or changing the shape of the body or whatever it is you might need. And working with this pencil and writing directly on the screen has been such a phenomenal experience. There are tablets that can do similar things, but they're expensive and they require hooking it up to a whole second computer. But I have this amazing workflow right here at my fingertips, wherever I happen to go. I got the optional iPad Pro that has the SIM card built in and I was able to link it up to my Verizon account, which also has unlimited bandwidth, which means basically I can pick this up, bring it with me anywhere and have it automatically sync everything back to my desktop. All my images while on the road are automatically backed up. I can do all this awesome editing, just about unlimited editing, and then share it and post it directly on Instagram from wherever. So what does all this software cost? It's, it's mostly free or, or super cheap. Lightroom Mobile itself is free. And if you have the Lightroom Creative Cloud, then the synchronization is built into that. If you don't have Lightroom Creative Cloud, then you can use Lightroom Mobile. You can do the importing, you can do the processing of your pictures, but they won't automatically sync to your desktop. Affinity Photo, the photo Photoshop alternative with layers and such is 20 bucks, which is remarkably cheap. Like that's a lot for these iOS apps, but it's super cheap for compared to the Windows apps. Also, how is it for, how is the iPad for general day-to-day -day type work? Because photographers don't just do photo editing, but you know, I spend a lot of time in Slack for internal communications. I use Microsoft Word when I'm writing these books and I have the iOS versions of those and uh, they've been just fantastic. Thank you, Apple, for making such a great product. And no, it's not sponsored. <laughs> I just paid for it out of my own pocket. Um, by the way, I got the 512 gig version, which has been really key because we shoot a lot of like 15, 80 megapixel files and they take up a lot of space and loading them up here isn't any problem at all. Uh, we also shoot 4K 60p video with a GH5 and I've been loading them in here and doing video editing with different apps. That works just great. I'll follow up with another video. One more minor thing I want to talk about when I travel with a laptop, even small laptops tend to have a big ugly power brick that you need to carry around. but. The iPad Pro here is USB powered, which means if I need to give it some extra power, um, most airplanes nowadays have a little USB charging outlet so I can charge it in the airplane or from my car, or I can even use one of these little battery packs like this and just charge it up on the go. Not having to worry about power for it or ever running out of power. Just again, it just makes a big difference in my workflow. If you have any questions, Write something down in the comments down below. If you have an app you want me to check out for the iPad, I'm definitely getting into it. So let me know. Thanks. Subscribe to see more. Check out our books on the full version of Lightroom, which includes information on Lightroom Mobile, as well as our photography books. That'll make a big difference. Bye.